Hello and welcome once again to another lesson. Today we're going to talk about clouds and cloud formation. What are clouds? A cloud is a collection of small water droplets or ice crystals that are suspended in the air. Clouds are visible because water droplets and ice crystals reflect light. Clouds are usually associated with precipitation, but most cloud types do not produce precipitation. How do clouds affect climate? The pattern of precipitation from clouds in an area will determine the climate of that area. Thick, low-altitude clouds reflect more sunlight back into space and help to cool Earth. Thin, high-altitude clouds absorb more energy that radiates from Earth and re radiate some of it back to Earth's surface. This warms Earth. Clouds form, how do clouds form? Clouds form when water vapor condenses or changes from gas to liquid. For water vapor to condense, moist air must be cooled to a certain temperature and the air must be holding the maximum amount of water vapor possible. If air rises high enough into the atmosphere, it cools to its dew point. Dew just like the picture that you can see below. Dew point is defined as the temperature at which the rate of condensation equals the rate of saturation. What is saturation? It means that the air is holding the maximum quantity of water vapor possible at a given temperature or pressure. Dew point is the temperature at which water vapor in saturated air can condense and form water droplets or ice crystals. In clouds, tiny solid particles called cloud condensation nuclei are the surfaces on which water droplets condense. Clouds are most commonly made of numerous small water droplets. However, at high altitudes, where temperatures are very cold, clouds are composed of ice crystals. You can see the difference of size between condensation nucleus and a cloud droplet when you look at the picture below. What is the role of solar energy in cloud formation? Solar energy drives the water cycle and thus provides the energy for cloud formation. Water on the surface of the land and the oceans absorbs solar energy and becomes water vapor in a process called evaporation. Cloud formation takes place when water droplets or ice crystals condense on solid particles in the air. What processes cool air enough to form clouds? Air can be cooled to its dew point in several ways, including frontal and orographic lifting. Frontal lifting can occur when a warm air mass rises over a cold air mass or when a mass of cold air slides under a mass of warm air. Orographic lifting occurs when an obstacle, such as a mountain range, forces a mass of air upward from the prefix oro, which means or pertaining to mountain, so and graphic, which means writing. So this means lifting that occurs relating to mountain. That's the obstacle. In what ways are the processes of frontal lifting and orographic lifting similar? In what ways are they different? As what you can see in the picture in the frontal lifting, you can see that the warm air is going up and the cold air is just below that. And you can see that in the cold air, there is the direction going to the right. That's the direction of the movement. And that is why it's called cold front. Front is the boundary between the cold and the hot air. So, the name 
is given depending upon which air is moving towards another. So in this case, since the cold front, since the cold air is moving towards the warm air, then it's called a cold front. If it's the opposite, then it is a warm front. And then orographic lifting, as what you can see, that uh, there is an, there are arrows going up. So from the lower elevation going upward, that's why it's called orographic lifting. So there is the rise, rise of the air from the lower to the higher elevation. And as what you can see also, if you are going to look at the temperature from the 30 degrees Celsius going up, it becomes cooler. So right, warm air rises and when it goes up, it becomes cooler. What are the three cloud shapes? The three classes of clouds based on shape are stratus, cumulus, and cirrus clouds. Stratus clouds are thin and flat and their edges are not clearly defined. Stratus is a Latin word that means layer. So we can simply say stratus clouds are clouds that are layered or layered clouds. Stratus clouds often merge into one another and may look like a single layer that covers the entire sky. Cumulus is a Latin word that means hip. Cumulus clouds are thick and puffy on top and generate flat on the bottom. These clouds have well-defined edges and can, sh can change shape rapidly. They can be bright or dark and they can produce severe weather. Cirrus is a Latin word that means curl. Cirrus clouds look white and feathery and their ends curl, hence the name cirrus. They are made of ice crystals rather than liquid water droplets. They do not produce precipitation that reaches Earth's surface. By the way, uh, cirrus clouds are made of ice crystals rather than liquid water droplets because they are found at high altitude. And since the temperature is cold there, that's why these clouds are made of ice crystals. What are the new types of clouds based on altitude? The four classes of clouds based on altitude are low clouds, middle clouds, high clouds, and clouds of vertical development. These four classes are made up of 10 cloud types. Prefixes are used to name the clouds that belong to some of these classes. Low clouds form, form between Earth's surface and 2,000 meters altitude. They are commonly made up of water droplets. The three types of low clouds are stratus, stratocumulus, and nimbostratus. There is no special prefix for naming low clouds. However, nimbus means rain, so nimbus stratus clouds are rain clouds. Middle clouds form between 2,000 meters and 6,000 meters altitude. They are commonly made up of water droplets but may be made up of ice crystals. The prefix alto is used to name middle clouds. The two types of middle clouds are alto cumulus and alto stratus. High clouds form above 6,000 meters altitude, where air temperature is below freezing. Therefore, high clouds are made up of ice crystals, as what I mentioned earlier. The prefix zero is used to name high clouds. Cirrus, cirrocumulus, and cirrostratus are the types of high clouds. A cloud of vertical development can have its base at low altitude, but its top can reach higher than 12,000 meters. The two types of clouds of vertical development are cumulus and cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus clouds are linked to severe weather and can produce rain, hail, lightning, tornadoes, and rapidly sinking columns of air. What are the types of clouds based on altitude? 